Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, we're finally taking a look at the new high-end desktop series codenamed Cascade Lake X from Intel. Also, just quickly, if you'd like one of these awesome limited edition happy unboxing Christmas t-shirts, also available in the jumper form factor, then head over to our merch store. Link is in the video description. Also, quick side note, it is absolutely blowing its ass off outside today. So apologies to headphone users. Yeah, the wind noise is a bit annoying. But anyway, we will continue on with it. If it's not obvious at this point, I did decide to skip over the embargo date for the day one reviews because initially it was set for the same time and date as the third gen Threadripper review and pretty obvious which one of those products should be given priority. And it's crazy to think that we are prioritizing AMD product reviews, but yeah, that's where we are in 2019. We're also at the point of this video where Today's video is sponsored by Deepcool and their Castle 360EX all-in-one liquid cooler. It incorporates Deepcool's patented anti-leak technology for improved reliability, while the large 360mm radiator and trio of TF120S fans ensure optimal performance. Complementing the performance is an RGB light show like no other. This is without a doubt one of the most visually stunning coolers on the market. And for that added peace of mind, the Castle 360EX is also backed by a three year warranty. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Now, Intel, who really had nothing new to show, still managed to annoy the absolute crap out of tech reviewers worldwide by pulling one of their typical BS stunts. Apparently around five days before the reviews were set to go live, Intel pushed their release window forward by six hours, effectively allowing them to fire the first shot, which allowed them to avoid getting obliterated by AMD's much larger caliber weapons. So it sounds like while the US-based tech media were made aware of the embargo time change around five days uh, before the reviews were set to go live, sadly the local Australia marketing team who represent Intel let us know about seven hours before the new deadline. So yeah, seven hours before it was set to expire that is. So that is kind of ridiculous. Thankfully I wasn't working furiously to get our content ready in time, instead I was working furiously on getting our third gen a Threadripper review ready, plus I did have a backup plan. And that backup plan was around two weeks earlier, I managed to get my hands on all four Cascade Lake X parts without signing any NDA. So that means I could have released this content much earlier, but out of respect to other reviewers who I knew were working hard on their own content, I didn't. Frankly though, I was more interested to make sure I had the Core i9-10980XE so I could compare it to the 3950X, 3960X and 3970X in the Threadripper review, and we did just that. Now, it was a good thing that I sourced this processor myself because Intel certainly didn't come through for us. In fact, we weren't offered a sample from Intel until the 18th, and after promptly agreeing to provide a review, it didn't arrive until a week later, about seven hours before the new deadline. Worse still, Intel sent just a small box with the 10980XE inside. There was no 10940X, 10920X or 10900X, just the 18 core flagship model. So pretty bloody weak. Oh, and in typical Intel fashion, what they sent out was a qualification sample. Seriously, how hard is it? AMD can provide not only a complete review kit, but they can do so with real retail chips. Intel's budget is how much bigger than AMD's and they can't even provide retail chips, let alone a full range of them. Seriously, Intel, if you wish to become competitive again, please work on getting this stuff right. You're quickly becoming a joke at this point. When you've got Linus ripping into shreds, you know you've messed up. Anyway, I could go on and on about Intel and their mismanagement of the media and countless other things, but let's just get on with the review. So, as I mentioned, Intel only provided us with the Core i9-10980XE, but we've managed to source the other parts ourselves, which include the 10940X, 10920X, and the 10900X. Intel's dropped the 16-core model, previously known as the Core i9-9960X, or 7960X before that. So, with the exception of the 16-core part, the 10, 12, 14, and 18-core models are all getting refreshed. This series was first released back in late 2017 as the 7000 series, codenamed Skylake X. A year later, it was refreshed as the 9000 series, still codenamed Skylake X. This latest version came with a small factory overclock and featured solder rather than thermal paste for connecting the CPU die to the heat spreader. Basically, this made them worse for overclockers, but slightly better for everyone else. Now, for the second consecutive year, Intel is refreshing Skylake X once again, though to be fair, Cascade Lake X is a little different. 
so it's not just a straight refresh. Once again, we're getting a little extra frequency, though we're also getting a few more PCIe lanes, better memory support, and some hardware security fixes. Oh, and the prices have been slashed. Both the memory frequency and capacity support have been upgraded, going from 128 gigabytes of DDR4 2666 to 256 gigabytes of DDR4 2933. Boost frequencies have increased from 200 to 300 megahertz, depending on the part, though performance gains here might be offset by the hardware level security fixes for Spectra and Meltdown variants 2, 3, 3A, 4, and L1TF. The big difference for potential buyers are the price changes. The 18 core model has dropped down from $2,000 previously for the 9980XE to $1,000 for the 10980XE. Then we have the 14 core model, it's down to $800 from $1,400. And then the 12 core model is down to $700 from $1,200. And then the 10 core model is now priced at $600 down from $1,000. Those are some seriously heavy discounts, but Intel's not being generous. They're just fighting to remain relevant. And honestly, I don't think they're fighting hard enough, as you're about to see. For testing these new Cascade Lake X CPUs, we have the brand new MSI X299 Creator. Not the creation, but rather the new Creator motherboard. It's a bit confusing, I know, but this board is the real deal. It packs 10 gigabit LAN, Wi-Fi 6, loads of M.2 ports, and a whopping big 12-phase vCore VRM with 90 amp power stages. So a big thank you to MSI for sending that over for testing. It's been a great motherboard to work with. Okay, let's jump into the results. First up, here are the Cinebench R20 multi-core results. And we can see that the 10980XE does come in behind the Ryzen 9 3950X, the 10940X match the 3900X, while the 10920X and 10900X were roughly on par with the Threadripper 2920X and a little ahead of the Ryzen 7 3800X. I think maybe we should just stop saying X behind every single model. Uh, what the hell, we'll just continue as is. So right now, the 2920X can be had for $500. So that places the slower but more expensive 10900X in a bit of an awkward position. At least for lightly threaded workloads, the Cascade Lake X range is more powerful than second gen Threadripper, though all models were comfortably beaten by the Ryzen 7 3950X. When it comes to compression performance using the 7-zip file manager, the new Cascade Lake X range does okay. The 10980XE might get dusted by the 3960X, but at least it was a bit faster than the previous generation's 2950X. That said, the 2950X is priced to compete with the 10920X, a part that it manages to edge out. Meanwhile, the 3900X matched the 10900X, so AMD also offers considerably more value there. AMD does much better when it comes to decompression performance, and here the 3950X comfortably beat the 10980XE, while the 2950X and 3900X beat the rest of the Cascade Lake X lineup. So that says it all really. Next up we have Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2020 edition, and here the 3950X just edged out the 10980XE, while the 3960X was a good bit faster. The Ryzen 9 3900X and Threadripper 2950X also beat the 10940X, while the 3800X wasn't a great deal slower than the 10900X or 10920X. Using the Puget System's Adobe Premiere benchmark, we find pretty similar results. Though this time in the export test, not just the 3950X, but also the 2950X managed to beat Intel's best. Meanwhile, the 2920X was able to outpace the 10920X and 10900X. Playback performance was quite good with the Cascade Lake X parts, though nothing amazing, as we do see a tight grouping between the 3950X and 3900X. The Core i9-10980XE does perform quite well in the VRA benchmark. Sure, it was easily beaten by the 3960X, which was 32% faster, but the Threadripper CPU also cost 40% more, so not too bad. That said, if you are more focused on value, then the 3950X is the way to go. It's just 6% slower, but costs 25% less. Then we have the 10940X, which appears to be in no man's land, but at $800, again, you're just better off with the faster 3950X. And then we see that the 3900X and 2950X both have the 10920X and 10900X covered. The Corona results are really just more of the same. The 3950X is very close to the 10980XE, and if you want maximum performance, get the 3960X or 3970X. The 3950X also beats the 10940X while costing less, and the 3900X does the same to the 10920X and 10900X. 
Finally, we have the Blender results, and this is another bad one for Intel. Here, the 3950X beat the 10980XE, while the 3900X matched the 10940X, which renders the rest of the lineup even more pointless. As for power consumption, well, it doesn't look great for Cascade Lake X. The 3950X was faster than the 10980XE, and yet we see here that the Intel CPU pushed total system consumption 29% higher. Also, yes, these results are correct. Due to clock speeds and voltages required to run at those clock speeds, the lower core count CPUs use more power, at least the 12 and 14 core models do. Now, here's a look at gaming performance. The 10980XE provides the best results of the Cascade Lake X lineup in Battlefield 5, though it was only roughly on par with the Ryzen 9 3950X, but of course performance was good enough for gaming. That said, the 1% low performance of the 10900X and even the 10920X kinda sucked. Intel's high-end desktop lineup performs well in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, not quite as well as the new third gen and Threadripper models, but overall still very good. Performance in Tom Clancy's The Vision 2 was also good, but the 10980XE did drop off the pace a little due to those lower clock speeds, but 149 FPS on average is hardly an issue. Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint, it's not exactly a CPU demanding title, but I included it to show what performance looks like in modern GPU bound games, so good to see that Cascade Lake X didn't run into any issues here. Performance in F1 2019 was solid, again the 10980XE can be seen falling off the pace a little bit, but it's nothing you'd actually notice when playing the game. The Cascade Lake X range was able to extract maximum performance from the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti and Borderlands 3 at 1080p, so that's really all they need to do here. The last game we're going to look at is Fortnite, and here the 10900X and 10920X performed well, though we're only looking at a few extra frames over their rising competitors. Using 1.22 volts, I was able to push these Cascade Lake X parts to between 4.8 GHz and 5 GHz depending on the model and how lucky we got with the silicon lottery. Remember, these samples weren't provided by Intel. The overclocks boosted performance in Cinebench R20 by around 20-25%, to 25%, so that's not too bad at all. In fact, those gains are actually quite impressive, but do be aware they don't come for free. Expect to pay with a serious increase in power usage, which means bigger and more expensive cooling is required. The 10900X isn't too bad. We see a 27% increase in total system consumption, which is in line with a 25% performance boost. Of course, those margins are a little skewed because we're including the total system consumption, but I feel that's more relevant to the end user. Where things get way out of hand is with the new higher core count models. The 10980XE saw total system power usage increase by 91%, hitting 602 watts. So good luck with that. Here's a look at thermals, both stock and overclocked. The Cascade Lake X processors along with the 3960X and 3970X were cooled using Corsair's Hydro X bits along with a 360mm radiator. Stock the 3rd gen Threadripper and Cascade Lake X CPUs ran at between 63 and 70 degrees, so a fairly tight range there. Overclock though, the temps quickly got out of control with the 14 and 18 core models. Basically a 360mm rad on a custom loop just isn't enough, even with fine voltage tuning. For the 10980XE, 4.5 to 4.6 GHz would be more realistic on water. Here's a look at price versus performance in the Puget Systems Premier Export Test. If you're a content creator, it seems pretty clear get the 3950X, and if you require more PCIe lanes, then get the 2950X. Hell, Intel's own 9900K does a better job here, at least in terms of value. Of course, if you're not that interested in value and you just want performance, well, there's the Threadripper 3960X. The performance margins seen in Cinebench R20 were very similar to what we saw in V-Ray, Blender, and Corona, so Cinebench is a good representation of the kind of performance you can expect to see in those programs. In terms of value and performance, the 3960X destroys any and all Cascade Lake X processors, and if you really care about value, then again, get the 3950X. We also see that the 3900X, 2920X, and the 2950X dominate these Cascade Lake X processors in terms of value. Well, I have to say that went pretty much as expected. Unfortunately for Intel, they just haven't cut prices by enough. If you can't offer the fastest HEDT part, you have to offer the most value, and that's something AMD did with their first two generations of Threadripper CPUs, though I'd argue that the second gen Threadripper was still a lot more competitive in terms of performance. You only have to look at those price to performance graphs that we just checked out to realize that even at the heavily discounted prices, second gen Threadripper is often still a better buy. Of course, AMD has discounted parts such as the 2920X and 2950X as well, which just help keep them relevant. 
The bigger issue for Intel right now though is the 3970X, the 3960X and the 3950X. Those three parts alone have Intel covered. The 3950X is not only cheaper than the 10980XE, but it's also faster in the vast majority of workloads, sometimes much faster. Moreover, when the 3950X was slower, it really wasn't much slower. Then for those not concerned with price, the extra $400 the 3960X will set you back is well worth it. It's a significantly superior product. There's also the second gen Threadripper processors, which AMD plans to continue selling as value oriented HEDT options. And this is a move by AMD that has really screwed Intel over. Had AMD discontinued second gen Threadripper, Intel would have been more competitive as the value HEDT option, offering more PCIe lanes than third gen Ryzen. But parts such as the 2950X and 2920X are great in terms of value. But even so, for new shoppers, I'd probably recommend avoiding them. If you require just 16 high performance cores, then get the 3950X. It's also available with much cheaper motherboards. I'd really only recommend second gen Threadripper if you require more PCIe lanes, but can't afford to drop $1,400 US on the 3960X. But be aware, the X399 platform is dead, just like Intel's X299 platform. The only way I can see Intel's Cascade Lake X range becoming viable as if they drop prices further. The 10980XE really needs to come down by at least another $200, which would make it $50 more than the 3950X. The 10940X, that needs to drop down to $700, and then the 10920X down to around $600, and then I really think the 10900X, that just needs to be dropped entirely. The only advantage they offer over AMD's mainstream AM4 processors is the extra PCIe lanes, though they are only Gen 3 spec lanes. But still, the volume of them is Intel's only advantage. And as I said, at the current prices, if you require those extra lanes, then just get second Gen Threadripper. Overall, a disappointing refresh from Intel, even with the massive price drops, they still fail to compete with AMD. And it's just mind boggling to think how much things have changed in such a short period of time. On a final note, while Cascade Lake X has disappointed, MSI's new X299 Creator didn't. It's really a great motherboard. I had planned to continue using the Gigabyte X299 Aorus Gaming 9, but I was having issues overclocking with that board. It kept powering off when exceeding 500 watts draw from the wall, and I couldn't override the safeguard, though I'm not sure I really wanted to. Under that load, the VRM was squealing like a tortured pig. And that is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, thank you. That's good stuff. And if you appreciate the work we do here at Harbour Unboxed and you want to become more involved with the channel, then join the Harbour Unboxed community over on Patreon. You'll get access to our, our private Discord chat, monthly live stream, which has probably just happened or just happening. So I have to wait for next month on that one. Bad timing. But anyway, and you can also pick up some Harbour Unboxed merch, the um, you know, limited edition Happy Unboxing t-shirt, the jumper, which I've thrown over there now. Yeah, all that stuff is over on our merch store. And just finally, for headphone users, yes, I'm, I know the wind noise was bad at times, but I can't control the weather and I need to get this video done because I'm heading to Tim's place to film the Q&As and do the Patreon live stream and all that stuff. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.